Is your camera running at exactly 24 frames per second? How do you know at what position your camera will run at an exact speed on cameras like the Bolex and the K3 that don't have hard clicks? Short answer is that's impossible. They don't run at exact speeds. Today I'm going to use a stroboscope and another free method to determine if a camera is running at a given speed. Today, even the cheapest digital camera runs at a constant speed. You can use any digital camera to shoot video and an external audio recorder to capture sound. They are going to synchronize perfectly once you put them together. That was not the case with most film cameras for a long time. To talk about frame rate speeds, we have to talk about different cameras and the motor or power that keeps the camera running. I'm going to sort cameras into two categories, electric and non-electric. The earliest cameras were not powered by electricity. We all have seen footage of those big wooden boxes with a lever on the side mounted on a tripod. A camera guy next to it cranks the lever to advance the film. Have you heard the terms over and under crank? Well, they were born at the time. It's obvious that these cameras are not even close at running at a constant speed. So let's move to the next category, the wind-up camera. There are a lot of cameras in the wind-up category that are used today. The most common examples are the Bolex, the K3 and the IMO, but there are also tons of regular 8 and 16mm cameras that took advantage of this technology. When you wind the camera up, the energy is stored in the wound-up spring as potential energy. When you pull the trigger, the spring unfolds and this converts the stored energy into kinetic energy driving the gear and in turn generates movement of the attached parts down the line. In order to keep the camera running at a certain speed, camera manufacturers use a governor. This part is basically a weight that changes position. It regulates the speed at which the camera runs. There is nothing wrong with wind-up camera technology. There are prime examples of beautiful films shot with these cameras. The problem is you cannot use the cameras if you want to synchronize sound. At least if you don't want to spend hours fixing the issue in post. Using electricity to power a camera was a logical step, and they did use electricity to power cameras back in the 1890s. They had electricity, but they didn't have batteries good enough to power a big motor. For that reason, hand-powered and wind-up cameras remained popular for a long time. To talk about electrical cameras or motors, I'm going to separate them into three categories. Wild, Pilot Tone or similar systems, and Crystal Sync. As I mentioned before, when electricity was available, it was used to power studio cameras, which at the time were wild. Wild is a term that describes a motor that runs more or less at a certain speed, but varies depending on changes in voltage, the load being carried by the motor, friction, and other factors. Born in the 1950s, Pilot Tone was a system that used a synchronization signal that was sent from the camera to an audio recorder like the Nagra. The recorder was able to decode those pulses and use the information acquired to record and compensate for changes in the speed of the motor of the camera. The main issue was that the camera had to be attached to the sound recorder with a cable. This method is known as single system. Brands like Bolu use the term Sync Pulse Generation in their Synchro Pilot system. The concept was the same. There are several Super 8 and 16mm cameras that are able to start and stop a sound recorder, but they don't send any information to it. The quartz oscillator technology used on the Nagra led to the invention of the Crystal Sync motor. This technology uses a quartz oscillator to keep a motor running exactly at a given speed. Crystal sync motors compensate for small changes in voltage, changes on the load the motor is carrying, like less or more film, and other factors. Crystal sync motors are not perfect, but they keep the camera running at high tolerances that are imperceptible when the footage is synchronized with sound. Cameras like the Eclair MPR, Airy S, Airy BL, and several 35mm cameras from the time evolved with this technology. It is common to find wild, pilot tone, and crystal sync motors for these cameras. 
Keeping a camera running at an exact speed will help to maintain the image looking normal, not like those Charles Chaplin movies with the funny movement. Probably the most important aspect of keeping a camera running at a perfect speed is the ability to record sound. Now, a stroboscope or strobe is an instrument used to make a cyclically moving object appear to be slow moving or stationary. It's a lamp that produces brief, repetitive flashes of light. What I have here is a strobe designed to measure four camera speeds. I have it set to 24 frames per second right now. A light source flickering at 24 Hz makes an object that moves at 24 revolutions per second appear stationary. I'm going to use some cameras that have crystal sync motors to prove this concept. Ok, so now we know that a stroboscope can help us prove a camera is running at exactly 24 frames per second. But I said I was going to help people who don't have a crystal scene camera to find a spot where their camera runs more closely at 24 or any given speed. Stroboscopes are used in the industries like machining to determine the unknown speed at which a tool like a lathe is running. If you think about it, we just have to invert the process. So I'm going to increase or decrease the speed of a camera like the K3 until the mirror shutter appears stationary. As I said at the beginning, it's never going to be perfect, but you can find a spot close to 24 frames per second or any speed you may want to measure. The Bolu 4008 is an electronic camera that has a wild motor. Contrary to cameras like the Bolex or the K3, there is a hard stop on the 24 frames per second position on the Bolu. Let's see if that's the best option to run the camera at. I tested some cameras that were serviced recently, and the 24 frames per second position was the best option. If you think about it, a camera that hasn't been serviced in a long time has dried, greased and dirt, which causes more resistance on the mechanism of the camera. After servicing a camera, a technician will set the resistance of the electronics to a given quantity of ohms. This will tell the motor of the camera how much force it needs to apply. I can test my cameras because I have a stroboscope, but most people don't have one. If you have several cameras like me, a stroboscope is a good investment. There is an app called Strobe Light Tachometer that can be used for free. I paid the $2.99 to release the brighter light option. It was money well spent. The app works great, and you can select any speed you want. As a matter of fact, I wanted to test this camera that I bought some time ago and never used. This Scupic M has a crystal sync conversion performed by Canon back in the 1970s. The camera runs only at one speed, and when I tested it at 24 frames per second, the camera was not in sync. I was sad for a moment, then I decided to increase the speed of the strobe to see if the camera was running faster or slower, and what was my surprise when I discovered that the camera was running at exactly 25 frames per second. That means the camera was converted to be used with the PAL standard used in Europe, and even when it runs only at one speed, the camera runs at crystal sync speed. As you can see, I can use a pull-down claw to see if the camera is running at a crystal sync speed on cameras where you can't see the shutter. By the way, if you want to make your test more accurate, you can load film on the camera. That would take into consideration the resistance that the camera faces to compensate in order to drag the film. If you don't have a phone, or you can't get the app for some reason, but you have a camera like a DSLR that can shoot video at 24 frames per second and it can be controlled manually, it's the same concept. We have two devices running at the same speed. Hence, they should cancel each other, right? Well, we can see something happening, but we cannot dictate the cameras running at a crystal speed. We have to break the time even more by increasing the shutter speed. At some point, the part will remain stable, just like with the stroboscope. Most cinema cameras run at 24 frames per second, but digital cameras run at 23.976 frames per second 
also known as 24P. The difference between the two is 0.1%. Can the human eye perceive that difference? I don't think so. But if you record the video and speed it up, the part will appear to move after some time. There is a difference, but it is negligible. Well, there you go. Now you have two free methods to test your cameras and two methods that can help you find a point where your camera runs closest to 24 frames per second. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe.